What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of the career mode. This is episode number 115 now and I want to say guys before we go into this one Thank you for the incredible support on the first episode when we came to Inter Milan. What was it? 113 that episode was. There's since been up 114 on the channel. That one's just gone live as I'm recording this commentary. But I asked you guys for 50 likes on the first or, you know, episode 113. And you guys smashed it. You hit 150 likes, which is crazy. So thank you for the mental support. Maybe I should increase the, uh, the likes target I ask for at the end of the video. Who knows? I'll increase it for this one. Maybe we'll hit it. Maybe we won't. It's going to be a big ask at the end of this video. But guys, if you did enjoy it, then I appreciate it. And I uh, appreciate all the likes you guys gave on that video. As I said, I asked for 50. You guys got 150. You smashed it. So I want to thank every single person out there who liked that video and did enjoy it. And hopefully you'll enjoy this one as well. We've got episode number 115 here. Three more games to come in this one. If you've watched yesterday's episode, you'll know exactly what happened in that one. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it because I'm about to spoil it in this one. So if you haven't clicked, on the, uh, clicked off the video now, click off at this point. But for everyone still on the video, who has of course seen it, you will all know that we lost that game against PSG in yesterday's episode to an absolutely unreal strike from Rabio at centre mid for them. Which is not some way that I wanted to start this one. It's not the way... I wanted to start our Champions League. Of course, we got a 1-0 victory against Wolfsburg, but we didn't play well in that one either, and we were quite lucky, in a sense, to come away with a 1-0 victory there. Then, we took on PSG for the second game, and we got absolutely demolished in that one. So, in terms of Champions League performances, not been too great here at Inter Milan, which you can't wrap that with the fact that the league performances, we've got off to an absolute flyer here at Inter Milan. So, that's pretty good to see as well. But this one here against Fiorentina, looking to pick up as many points as we possibly can from the three games in today's episode. As I mentioned, we've pretty much got a full league campaign to come here. And when you've got a man like Raul Jimenez in form and striking well, it just had to be him to get the opening goal of this one. Ten minutes into the game, a palm strike from the keeper falls in the way to the, uh, the Spaniard. I think he's Spanish. I could be wrong there, but I think he is. But you can see he's in such great form that he's just simply not going to miss a tap in like that. He seems to be popping up in the right area. As you can see, though, it did actually come off the defender and could have quite easily been blocked that. He just pops up in the right areas and grabs himself the goal whenever you need him, which is good to see as well. So that gave us the lead in this one as I look to improve on our already great start to life in the Calcio A. But Fiorentina did have a couple of things to say about this one, the first of which comes from a corner from them. Header comes straight in, but it's thankfully straight at the keeper as well, straight into his hands, and I can... Uh, Surely say that I was very, very worried at that point, and especially when they came out second half and got off to the half better than we did, because we did not start great in the second. We didn't really have a great first half other than the first 10 minutes, and this one, phenomenal save yet again from Selves, came in with such pace on the ball, and he had to be quick to react there and get the save made, and he did in fact do it, but this, guys, you saw Rabio's last episode, of course, you saw how crazy that strike was, how good would this one have been if Donso would have absolutely rifled the back of the net with this one. It came back off the bar. I was gutted for him, because I was saying as well, he may be leaving us, but you guys have... Um, I've spoken your numbers, of course, leaving me comments like you always do. And a couple of you guys have told me to keep hold of him because he's a beast. So I will be probably keeping hold of him for the rest of this season at least. Give him a season, see what he's capable of doing. I'll still be looking to bring in a couple of people in January. So thank you to everybody who's left already comments as well for players that you want me to sign. If I don't do it in the next episode because I haven't recorded that yet, I'm going to be recording that tonight. And I apologise in advance, but just know as well that these are probably block recorded. So, uh, of course, we've got a little bit of time anyways until the January transfer window. Um, so, I'll show you the shortlist later on tonight, possibly, if I remember to do so. I've actually added them to it. I just, of course, need to show you guys the players that are on there. But you guys have asked for so many signings. And there's a couple of them that I may not be able to do. And a couple of them that are a bit of an issue, depending on if they're still in the game, slash how much they're going to cost. Because, of course, some people have asked me to bring over Lou. Green and a couple of other guys from Leeds. But the thing is, Lou and Green combined are going to cost around 180 to 200 million. So that could be quite difficult to do. So maybe they won't be, uh, they won't be able to sign them in this first window. But they are a possibility over the course of the next few seasons here at Inter Milan. And then, guys, off the back of that 1-0 victory against Fiorentina, which is a very scrapey 1-0 win. But if you want to be uh, high in the league, you've got to win those games where you're you know, sort of struggling to get your chances away. And we did win it by a goal to nil. Then we came into this one here against Lazio. And this is a very, very big game because Lazio was sat... I think at the time we were in second and they were in third, which weren't too far behind us. So in terms of that one, yeah, it's going to be pretty much a six point at this one, I'm going to call it. If, if you will, I know it's very early on in the season and of course we're still chasing the title here, but Juventus is not going to be easy, Napoli got not going to be easy and all the teams that I named yesterday. They're all, of course, not going to be easy teams. But if you're looking at Lazio, they're sat third at the moment and which, uh, to me... This says it's a six-pointer, and it's going to be a tough game, this one, because they do have a very good side. If you were here back before I started FIFA 17, when I had, I think, we had around 150 subs on the channel. That's how long ago I uploaded one. I actually did a Lazio career in FIFA 16, um, and I say, this, are we going way back at this point, because we're now almost at 5,000 subs. So that was when I had 150, and they still have a pretty similar side to what I had back in FIFA 16. 
So this side, I know a little bit about it, you know, the likes of Kishner. Um, they've got, you know, Immob Immobile, Immobile, I don't know how you guys say it. I say Immobile, but I don't know if I'm saying it right. They've got, obviously, uh, Keita on the left wing as well. But they've actually got Jordan Lukaku at left back. Now, he's somebody you don't see too much in FIFA, you know, at career mode and ultimate team level. You don't see Jordan Lukaku all that much. You see Romelu Lukaku a lot. But, of course, Jordan, his brother, isn't really known in terms of uh, football. There are people out there, of course, know him and use him in, in FIFA. But you don't tend to see him all that much in FIFA. And there's a reason for that. Because when you go down his left-hand side, he's not the greatest of defenders. However, he wasn't at fault for this first goal in this one. Absolutely brilliant turn there. Get a lot of luck but twice by both defenders not clearing their lines. And this is an absolute howler to concede if you're the Lazio manager. Straight from kickoff, gave the ball away twice. And not only that, it's actually an own goal. It takes a deflection on the way. The strike was not even on target and not even going in the back of the net at that point. It was actually off target. It takes a deflection off the defender. Absolutely fools the keeper. He tries to get down low to make the save. Can't unfortunately do it for them. But thankfully for us, what a way to start this one. So Bastos with zero goals in Calcio A in some ways, minus one because he's got himself an own goal there. But you can't really say too much about him. He tried to block the strike. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for them. And then I thought we were going to be 2-0 up in this one. Absolutely brilliant play all around the board in this first half. We hit the post. Unfortunately, though, it wasn't the inside of the post and it was actually the outside and it went straight out for a goal kick rather than rebounding into the path of my other striker there. Into the second half we went and we were dominant throughout the majority of this game, guys. But sometimes when I'm feeling dominant and having games like this and you get given a penalty and a chance to make it 2-0 and pretty much wrap up the six points in this one, you have to take them. Now, if you've been on the channel for quite a while, you'll know what my penalty taking skills are like. You'll know I am absolutely shocking at penalty kicks. I can't seem to break the curse and it still didn't go my way in this one again because I gave the penalty to Raul Jimenez to improve his already brilliant goal tally here at Inter Milan. And of course, once again, I miss. What do I have to do to score a penalty in FIFA? And it just so happens, guys, that that penalty miss came back to bite me on the ass because Lazio got a free kick here on the edge of the area. Fantastic free kick, I have to say. I have to give credit where credit's due. This was an unbelievable strike to concede and it seems as though right now, we are only conceding unbelievable strikes. That one coming at the hands of Keita there in 83 minutes on the clock. A fantastic strike coming back off the post and ending up in the back of the net. Making me rue that missed penalty. And I tell you what, guys. If I could score penalties in this year's FIFA, I would be loving life. I just can't score them. And it just becomes so frustrating because I know every single time I get to a penalty shootout or I get a penalty in a game, I know... There's a 75, you know, 80% chance I'm going to miss it. I don't know if it's all mental now because of the fact that I've missed so many times and it just I'm already sort of thinking in my mind that I'm going to miss it. But ultimately, it didn't matter because we brought Amang onto this left-hand side to play here in this game. I was a bit sceptical to bring him onto the left. Obviously, his default set is a striker and his crossing isn't that great. But it worked out wonders because 90 minutes on the clock, Lazio guys actually decided they wanted to go for the win after this. They were they were getting absolutely dominated throughout the majority of the game. And then in the last 10 minutes, once they got that goal, momentum was with them. They decided they wanted to have a go at trying to win it. Unfortunately for them, they got caught on the break. And thankfully for us, Amang made it 2-1. So late drama here in this one in the six-pointer, if you will, and a fantastic three points to pick up. It could have been so much easier. If I'd have scored that penalty, we would have been 2-0 up and cruising in a game that we were dominating. But thankfully, we got the three points in the end, and that's all that matters. You can see by the match facts, we had 12 shots, seven of those on target to Lazio's 2-2. Two and two. That is where I have to improve on, guys. My finishing is so poor this year in FIFA. And if I can improve on my finishing, the amount of chances I create on all my team, the amount of chances I create on career mode, I would be so much better at this game. And if I could score penalties as well. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It is what it is, guys. But that was that one. So we picked up six points from a possible six so far in today's episode. And it's always nice to see when you're on a good form and scoring goals and winning games that you can actually pick up the points even if you're not doing too well in the way of defending either. I mean, you can see we got a 1-0 victory earlier on. Very scrappy against uh, Fiorentina. We got a 2-1 victory there. So there haven't been dominant victories in terms of scoreline. There have been dominant games in terms of our performance. But in terms of scoreline... They've, uh, they've looked very, very shaky, if you will. So I'm looking to improve on it here by taking on Bologna. And if you did watch my Lazio uh, career mode way back in FIFA 16, Bologna was my first game I played in that career mode. They beat me in my first game. And then they beat me and did the double over me later on in, this, in the season. So in some ways, these are my bogey team, I guess you could call it. So I'm hoping in this year's FIFA, it's going to be completely different. You can see we're the best defensive unit in there alongside Juventus. You know, it's likely that that's going to be the possibility come the end of the season. Of course, Juventus with the likes of Chiellini, Barzagli, of course, two very good centre-backs there. They've also got one more, but I can't quite remember his name. And it's going to come, it's going to come back to me, and, and then it'll be frustrating as hell because I'll finish the commentary at that point. But they do have three really good centre-backs. I don't know if they're still here at Juventus. We are almost six years in, of course, or seven years in. So they may have changed over now, but 
Italians are renowned for being great defenders. We actually don't have any in our starting 11. We've got the likes of uh, Guy there and Juan Jesus, or Jesus, if you will. Because I think I was calling him Jesus, but is it, is it actually Juan Jesus? I think it is. I don't, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. And this is one of the things you're going to have to get used to, guys. If you watch me and I'm playing a uh, career mode that's not an English team, my pronunciation of names is absolutely shocking. And I apologize in advance if I upset anybody with that one. But this game, we got absolutely battered from the start. And it's not what I wanted to see. Came back off the post there. Could have quite easily been 1-0 Bologna. And it came back to them here. And no idea what on earth is going on. I tried to clear it like three or four times there. My keeper gets in an absolute hollow with my defender. Eventually, we get it away. So in the second half, it took right until the second half for anything to happen. And Bologna were on top for most of the game. You saw they came out there flying. And it took them 67 minutes before they got themselves a goal. At this point, I did not know what to make of this. Because defensively... I was shocking, and I'm going to have to buy some defenders in January, that's for certain, because my defensive line and me defending personally, I make so many mistakes recently in FIFA, and I can't afford to be doing that against the best team. So Bologna made me pay for that one, but I was not going to sit down and just let them have a 1-0 victory. We're shocking all the way through, but at the end of the day, if you want to win league titles, if you want to be champions, when you're playing bad, you have to pick up points. And when we were playing poor here, Jao Mario, one of the guys I said who was going to be the most important player of the series, or this season for sure... Came off the bench, he was on the bench for this one, being rested due to fitness reasons. He came off, I don't think I showed you the substitution, and he got us the equalising goal against Bologna. So in many ways, guys, it's already begun, in which case that they are probably going to be my bogey team in this one. As I mentioned, they beat me twice in that Lazio career mode, and they've already beat, or tried to beat me here. And it ultimately ended 1-1 in this one. So and after 90 minutes, in a performance that we were absolutely shocking for the majority of the game, we have to take the fact that I don't see this as two points dropped. I see this as a point gained. Because as I say, when you're playing badly, you need to pick up some points at least. We were playing shocking, we picked up a point. So at the end of the day, I'm happy with that point. Yes, it could have gone another way if Bologna had scored when they hit the post. And then, of course, the goal that they did score. You can see, by the way, in terms of match facts, it was very, very even in terms of shots. But my shots weren't from areas in which I could have said that I would, you know, sort of said there were going to be certain goals. They were sort of on the edge of the area. A couple of them were blocked going on target and it just didn't really work out in that one for me. But we got the point at least. We are coming towards the back end of the episode though, guys. If you have enjoyed it, I'd appreciate it if you could hit that like rating. If we could hit 70 likes on today's episode, that would be incredible. Big like target, but I think you guys can smash it. Thank you all again for your continued support on the channel. And I will catch you all with another video very soon. Adios.